It's time for another lightning round. Put me in the hot seat. I'm Joel Fieri, host of What You've Been Searching For, and I have some answers to some of your questions. Stay tuned. All right, as I've been saying, we have a new round of research here at Christian Podcast Central. Uh, we have some new questions that you, the listeners, have asked us about. Uh, and I just want to go through, like I've done before, once or twice. Uh, these are questions that I really didn't think I could get a full podcast out of, quite honestly. But I do have some thoughts on them, uh, and you have asked them. So I want to do my best to give you some probably incomplete answers that I could probably do a lot better job at. at but this is what I've got for you this week. And I think it's important to do this. I think it's important to uh, try and cover uh, all the points that you guys have been asking about. So no further ado. Um, I have the questions. The first question that comes to us, I'll start with an easy one. Okay, and ease my way into it. First one is, is practicing witchcraft a sin? Yes. End of answer. <laughs> okay, there are about 18 or 20 different verses in the Bible that talk about uh, things like witchcraft or divination or sorcery. The Bible makes it very, very clear that this is an affront to God and something that is definitely a sin and contrary to the will of God because it basically makes uh, an idol or a god out of darkness, prince of darkness, Satan himself, or just yourself and your own need. Most of witchcraft and these kinds of things are done by people just looking to be either be rebellious or somehow uh, experience something, I don't know, just to satisfy themselves. Um, so the answer to that question is yes. If you're out there asking, if you're wondering about witchcraft, it definitely is a sin, something that's an affront to God. Um, here's an interesting one. Why is Christianity not inherently a violent religion? And that's an interesting question because a lot of people could probably make the case that it is a violent religion. So many, many wars throughout history have been fought by Christians. Um, so it's interesting. I could answer this question both ways. You can put a mirror up to this question and, and uh, make an argument that it is a violent religion. But as Jesus was a nonviolent person for the most part, he only got violent when there was something he felt needed his righteous anger to cure. And the most obvious one was the money changers in the temple. Jesus got very violent then. Um, there are times uh, when he tells his disciples to take a sword with them. Uh, he used lots of military analogies when he told parables. So Christianity is not necessarily anti-violence, but uh, as opposed to uh, religions, say, like Islam, that as some people call a muscular, Christ or muscular religion or a uh, strong iron type religion where conquest is the goal, that's not Christianity. The goal of Christianity is to change people from within and make them new creatures. Well, if you're going to go and kill someone, there's not much chance of making them a new creature. The idea is to redeem. That's what Jesus came to do. He took the violence that was coming to us, and he paid the price, and that's what we're supposed to project. So, um, again, that doesn't mean I'm a pacifist. I'm not. Uh, there are just wars. There are, is a time for Christians to take up arms and fight to uh, right injustice to save the world, like my dad helped uh, in World War II. So, uh, but the reason it's not inherently violent is because Jesus' message was not inherently violent. The idea is changing from within, not without. Can you lose your salvation? This is one that I haven't really come to a, an answer on this one. Um, I've heard it explained several different times. Um, I tend to think, and the, the arguments that I've been told uh, that are most convincing is that if you are in a position where you completely reject Christianity, um, you probably never were a Christian to begin with. That's probably the most persuasive argument um, that I've heard. But on the other hand, I do know people who were pretty sincere Christians, and I think I'm a pretty good judge of character, um, who now are not following the Lord at all and are totally going the opposite direction. So at some point, I'm probably going to have to do a little more research on this and do an entire podcast on this question, because it does come up a lot. Um, it's something all my Christian life, uh, Christians have been asking this question, and I've been hearing sermons on it. It is a very big issue. Um, so, but from my perspective, what I've heard, 
I've come to the kind of the conclusion that if you are a person that completely rejects God, there was something not genuine about your faith or something missing in your faith to begin with. But don't hold me to that. Like I said, I'll do some more research on it. And in the future, I promise a full podcast on that. Okay, now here's a very, very important question. I want to be a Christian, but I did so many horrible things in my life. Will God forgive all my sins? Well, he promises to. If there were sins he couldn't forgive, then Jesus' death on the cross was kind of useless. More than kind of useless, it was useless. Okay, God can forgive anything that you've done. Uh, there is one unforgivable sin, but it has to do with something that doesn't come up anymore. Um, but God promises that there's nothing. He takes your sin and tosses them as far as he can into the deepest ocean. Um, if you want to see uh, and want to hear some stories of people who dealt with this, um, there's two guys that I could think of one that I know personally and one that I've seen personally uh, several times. The first, uh, I've seen him several times. Uh, his name is Michael Francis. He's an ex-New uh, York mobster. Uh, he was very high up in one of the mob families in New York. He was a made man. If you know anything about the mafia, my people, the Italians, I'm so proud. <laughs> um, in order to be a made man in the mafia, you have to do some pretty horrible things. And you have to be a pretty low person uh, that is in desperate need of forgiveness. Well, Michael Francis found forgiveness, and he's got a very, very compelling story uh, and talks about how he dealt with this very thing and how God has forgiven him and given him new life, and he's dedicated his life to sharing that message with others uh, through prison, through all kinds of different things, death threats, you name it. Um, but he found forgiveness. Uh, the other person is a personal friend of mine who's done a lot of podcasts with us in the past, comedian Jeff Allen. And I'm going to put a link below, uh, and Jeff tells a story um, of how he reached his lowest point in life. Uh, he was confirmed atheist, and his life was basically miserable. His marriage was on uh, the rocks, and uh, he tells a story of uh, before he um, realized people who have problems, people who are alcoholics, people who go through uh, these things, there has to be a low point where they finally realize, I need help. And Jeff tells the story of his lowest point. And I'm not going to spoil it for you now. We're going to put the link below. But if you watch that video and hear Jeff's story, you will realize that God can forgive just about anything. He can't forgive anything. Because I heard that story and I said, wow, if God could forgive that. And Jeff doesn't pull any punches about the kind of person he was and the grace and the forgiveness he found. So uh, the best, those best ways I can think to answer that question is to give you an example of two guys that I know who dealt with this and found forgiveness for some pretty awful stuff, I got to tell you. So hopefully you'll check that out. Can Christians do yoga? They can do yoga. Again, here, as I talked about with some of these questions, we got to kind of take them apart. Can Christians do yoga? I've done yoga. I've done some yoga stretches because I have a notoriously bad back and uh, I'm very stiff guy so doing some yoga stretches has helped me so yes I could say uh, Christians can do yoga the better question is can Christians practice yoga and that's where I think it gets a little uh, fuzzy and my wife and I have some conversations about this in the past because she's done yoga before but she's done her best not to practice it uh, yoga is Eastern mysticism. Sorry, folks. It's a, it's a part of a worldview and a faith uh, reality that I, as a Christian, don't share and that most Christians don't share. Uh, so, again, it may be splitting hairs a little bit, but I don't think so. I think there's a, there's a worldview and a philosophy and a faith behind yoga that Christians that is irreconcil irreconcilable with Christianity. So I would say... And I guess if this is a cop out, so be it. Christians can do yoga poses and stretches, but I would stay away from actually practicing yoga and really getting into a lot of the mind, body, spiritual things that they do. Because I think those could lead you down the wrong path uh, if you're not careful. Um, and the last one, uh, what do we, we as Christians do about climate change? I would 
say, as someone who's very much a skeptic on climate change, um, I don't doubt that climate changes. Um, again, one, as I said in my last video, um, my life has been lived through not only the uh, civil rights movement, but also the what used to be called the ecology movement, or um, people now it's called the environmental movement. Okay, um, and I've seen too many predictions and too many things about the ecology and the environment that haven't come true, which is why I'm skeptical about things like climate change. Uh, it seems like climate change people uh, embrace things like that to give them a cause that they can really get excited about, kind of a life or death um, scenario. If we don't do something about this, this is an existential crisis. Um, to me, these kinds of issues kind of give people a, an excuse to focus more on the here and now than they are on eternity. It doesn't mean we, the planet is disposable, doesn't mean we're done with it, or we don't have to take care of it, we're here. Um, one of the things I talked about also in uh, the racial reconciliation video, what we get wrong sometimes about these things is we forget what we got right. And I try and come, tell my kids this, the climate and the ecology and the environment are so much better than when I grew up. I grew up in LA in the 60s and 70s. Um, my whole childhood was spent underneath a 1500 foot thick layer of smog. Okay, um, there were, you couldn't even see a mile where I grew up. Uh, I grew up on a hill overlooking LA and I never saw LA unless it rained. Okay, that's how dirty the air was and how dirty things were. We've done come a long way because and Christians have had a lot to do with this. We want to be good stewards of what God has created. We see God's creation. It's God's creation. Why are we messing it up like this? Okay, so we have done a lot. But again, these things, too many people have um, a vested interest in keeping these things going. And I think that's what's happened when things like climate change, I think they've crossed the line to keep these things going. And we forget how good we have it. We have clean air. We have clean water uh, these days. I, I don't think there's an existential threat to us based on climate. Again, I'm not a scientist. I could be wrong. I've just seen too much, um, too many things like this. Too many predictions have not come true. Uh, and call me a skeptic, and I can live with that. Okay. So the question is, what should we do about it? Um, be aware of it. Take in both sides of the argument, but don't automatically buy into what everybody's telling you. Does that sound fair? Okay. So I hope that's a good job of, again, lining up some questions and knocking them down as best I can. Again, I think I will go a little bit more someday into Can You Lose Your Salvation? Maybe someday soon. So stay tuned for that and other podcasts. Again, I, I just tackled a pretty controversial subject, so I know some of you disagree with me. Let me hear it in the comments. Where am I wrong? Uh, like this video if you like it. Share it, please, with someone else. Uh, subscribe to YouTube and definitely go to ChristianPodcastCentral.com where there's more good content like this. Thanks for listening.